Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode 11 and today we're going to be covering player prefs and how to save and load information. Uh, I'm in the same exact project as last time. Uh, I have added two things though. I've added a folder called game information where I stored our last script game information script in the folder and I added a saving and loading uh, folder in our scripts folder. So the first thing I'm going to do is create two new scripts in our saving and loading folder. And the first one is going to be save information. And then I'm going to create one other one and it's going to be a C sharp script and it's going to be load information. I'm going to open up save information script and in mono develop and I'm going to we're going to create a public static function. Now this means the function is going to be able to be accessed throughout all of our throughout any script and there's only static means there's only going to be one of them in existence. Only one of these functions will exist at any time. So we're going to go in and create a public static. It's not going to return anything for now and we're going to say save all information. And this is going to be one giant this would be a one function that saves all information, uh, whatever you need to, whatever we have, uh, need, that whatever needs to be saved. Now, what you can do is create smaller functions, more specific functions that save at certain states. So maybe when you level up, maybe when your character levels up, you only need to save a certain amount of information. You shouldn't have to go through saving all your information. So you can create a simple, another simple static function that says maybe save uh, all information needed after level and that saves just maybe experience points and whatever is gained. So in here though <clears throat> we're going to be using player prefs and to access player prefs all you do is type in player prefs and you're going to be you're going to be list you're going to be uh you're going to be given several functions to use delete all which deletes everything that's in player prefs. You can delete a certain string or a, a certain object. So say you have the character's level saved, you can delete that itself. Uh, get float get int get string is how you load. We're going to be saving, so it's going to be set float set int set string. And so the first thing we're going to do is set an int. And in set int, you need to first give it a tag. And I like to use all my tags. I like to keep my tags uh, all in all caps. So for let's say for the first one, an integer is level. So we'll go player level. So this string is the tag. So this is what it's saved under. So if you went into, I'm on Windows, so if you went into the registry and you actually looked up this player level, or looked up player press where, <clears throat> excuse me, where Unity saves it, you'll see this tag, player prep, or player level, and you'll see whatever value is stored there. In this case, we're going to save player, we're going to save game information, the, the script that we used last time, and we're going to save player level. There you go. So when we call this function, so just to review real quick, when we call this function, say in our create a new character script, it's going to save this player prefs integer as it's going to save this player level from game information into our player level tag. So now we're going to go through and we're going to set a few others. So we're going to set a string this time, and it's going to be our player name. And we're going to go to game information dot name player name. So there we go. Now we're setting a string. <clears throat> if we go back to our, uh, if I go, if we control S to save, go back to Unity, and we're going to open up our game information script, so we can kind of see what we have in here, right? So we have a class, which we're going to have to get to later because we're going to have to serialize that and turn it into a string, which is a bit more complicated, but I'll definitely cover that because it's definitely useful. Uh, but the next thing we need to save is our our four stats. So we're going to go to save information. I'm going to copy this part and I'm going to paste it here four times. And this is going to be stamina. This one will be endurance. This is intellect. And then strength. And just a reminder, these do not have to be all caps. This is just how I prefer doing it. You don't have to do that. You can do whatever you want. It's just a string, and it's just it's a random string you can name. It doesn't even have to represent what's in it. It's just easier to understand that way for me. Um, 
and string. Okay, so here we go. We're saving, or this function is allowing us to save all of our information. I can control S to save, and then we're gonna go to Unity. We have no errors, so that's good. We're gonna open up our load information script, and I'm gonna base, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the same idea, but instead of getting, we're gonna be setting. So, I mean, instead of setting, we're gonna be getting, excuse me. So we're gonna create another public function. It's gonna be static. It will, it's not gonna return anything, so we write void, and it's gonna be load all information. And in this, instead of saying set, we're gonna use get. So like playerpreps.get information. But the trick is we need to set it equal to something, or set, we, so we need to use game information, well, not game object, game information dot, we're gonna do player name first. And you have to set that equal to whatever we get. So playerprefs.get string. And you enter the key that we uh, that we created here. So for player name, it's player name. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back, paste it. And that's it. So basically, what this player press get string does, it returns whatever value player name points to. So if player whatever is in the player name tag or whatever this this player name tag represents, it's going to return that value. In this case, it's a string, and it's going to be saved or put saved or stored in cache and the player name variable that in this case is stored in our game information script that will never be destroyed in uh, on scene load. So we're going to go through. I'm going to come to our save information script. And I'm just going to copy these for now, just so I can uh, remember the tags. I'm going to go game information dot player will do level is equal to player prefs dot get int, and then this is player level. And just to be safe, I like to copy that and paste it. I copied player level from our uh, from what we set before and just just to make sure it's the exact same I'm going to delete these two because we don't need them and then I'm going to create actually I can just do this and copy this integer this int one this get int one and I'm going to paste it four times so one two three four and we're going to do stamina endurance intellect and then strength control to save I'm going to grab stamina Copy endurance, paste. Copy intellect, paste. Copy strength, paste. The copying and pasting allows for less error, hopefully in the long run. So now we've created two very simple loading and saving functions that can be accessed anywhere. So what we want to do is in our create a character script, when we hit create, we want to save all the information. So the button where we're going to go after we... Uh, well, actually, excuse me. What we'll do is after we set all the variables here with new player, we'll just call our save information script, and then we're going to go dot save all information, and that's the function that we're going to run. Going to close it off with parentheses and add a semicolon. Control S to save. Oh, we don't want to add S. We're control S to save. We're going to go back to Unity, and hopefully we don't have any errors, and we don't. We can check to make sure that our create new character script is added. And just to show you that it's working, I'm actually going to go into our save information script and I'm going to write a debug statement so you know that it went through here. And I'm going to say saved all information. Debug, using the console and these little strings are super helpful when you need to debug anything. Or maybe you create a very complicated function and you don't know if you're getting through that entire function maybe you have a couple loops or if statements in there and you're not sure if it's working correctly using these debug logs and errors are the most perfect thing to find any issues in your code so again I'm going to control us to save go back to unity I'm going to run unity we have our characters uh, from last time I'm going to name it Dan it's going to be a mage this or let's do warrior this time I'm going to hit create and now we can see if we saved it. Hopefully, we did. 
I can let me pause it it's not moving here we go so here we go we saved all the information so that means it went through this script it saved all these in the tags and then it outputted uh, the debug statements that are in our create a character so there we have there we go we saved the information uh, next time I'm going to show you in the next episode I'm going to show you guys how to use our load information function that we created and we're going to actually change scenes to different scenes so you can actually see the game information object working as same with our loaded information uh, I hope you guys like the video please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time